The fragments of the Maba skull were discovered within a cave located at Lion Rock, in close proximity to the town of Maba in Guangdong province, southeastern China. They are composed of facial bones and portions of the cranial vault. Based on the fragments, experts were able to ascertain that the individual in question belonged to a pre-modern human species, maybe even an archaic human. Through the integration of past and present data, this video aims to synthesize and describe the current information available about the Maba hominin cranial morphology. The Maba hominin cranium is postulated to exhibit a face morphology reminiscent of Neanderthals. This image displays the overlay of the Maba skull, highlighted in red, on the Sacopastore one skull, highlighted in white, which is a European early Neanderthal dating back to the period between the Middle and Upper Pleistocene. Based on the determination that the Sacopastora skull is a mature female, it is reasonable to infer that the Maba cranium may likewise belong to a female individual. Additional examples of female ancient humans are the Gibraltar one Neanderthal and the Jinushan skull from northeast China, which also compares to the Maba cranium. Upon conducting more investigation on the Maba cranium, scientists discovered that the fossils, comprised of a cranial vault and sections of the right maxilla, with remnants of the nasal region still intact. The initial scientific documentation of the artifact highlighted resemblances to Neanderthals from Europe and Western Asia. Maba is sometimes classified as an intermediate species between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. Many experts considered the remains to be either archaic Homo sapiens or an Asian variant of Homo neanderthalensis. But with the identification of the Denisovans, many now believe it belongs within this group, along with several other Chinese specimens including the Harbin or Dragon Man cranium. Meanwhile, there are those who hold the belief that ancient Chinese skulls provide compelling proof of Neanderthals' presence in East Asia, and several researchers posit that interbreeding between Neanderthals and archaic humans may have occurred. In fact, anthropologists have been astonished to discover a distinctive structure in the inner ear of an ancient Chinese skull, which was previously believed to be exclusive to Neanderthals. This skull, dating back up to 100,000 years, was unearthed at the Shujiayao site in China. This discovery raises doubts about the exclusivity of the layout of the semicircular canals to the Neanderthals. The dating of the Maba fossil also presents difficulties. The time frame in question spans from the Middle Pleistocene to the Late Pleistocene, namely during the Middle-Late Pleistocene transition, occurring approximately between 300,000 and 130,000 years ago. The dating ambiguity arises from the presence of an original stratigraphic segment located in a deep and narrow cleft, making it difficult to establish its age with precision. The present chronological information is derived from another cave located 30 meters away from the site where the cranium was discovered. This dating information was obtained by the use of mass spectrometric U-series analysis on a sample from the cave, as well as uranium techniques on a vertebrate tooth. Furthermore, the Maba skull does not possess the distinctive anatomical characteristics of Neanderthals, which complicates its classification. The Maba skull displays features that are not only diagnostic of Homo erectus, archaic Homo sapiens, and Homo neanderthalensis, but also exhibits traits that are representative of both modern humans and Neanderthals. If the skull reconstruction is precise, the Maba skull has a comparable upper facial morphology to Neanderthals, characterized by a large nose and a thick parietal bone. The flat face and thin cranial vault resemble those of modern humans. Meanwhile, there are those who hold the belief that ancient Chinese skulls provide compelling proof of Neanderthals' presence in East Asia, and several researchers posit that interbreeding between Neanderthals and archaic humans may have occurred. In fact, anthropologists have been astonished to discover a distinctive structure in the inner ear of an ancient Chinese skull, which was previously believed to be exclusive to Neanderthals. This skull, dating back up to 100,000 years, was unearthed at the Shujiayao site in China. This discovery raises doubts about the exclusivity of the layout of the semicircular canals to the Neanderthals. The scientists observed a correlation between Homo erectus and the noticeable brow ridges, which formed an arch above each eye, 
as well as the low and thick bones of the brain case. The brain was seemingly larger than that of Homo erectus, but an accurate calculation of cranial capacity is unattainable due to the incomplete base of the skull. While the exact measurement of cranial capacity is unknown, it is thought that Maba has a cranial capacity of approximately 1,300 cubic centimetres. This is within the range of cranial capabilities observed in both modern humans and Neanderthals. The presence of nearly fully fused main cranial sutures, less prominent muscle crests, and the coarse exterior texture of the skull suggest that Maba is likely a middle-aged individual. An important characteristic to note is the lower lateral boundary of the eye socket in Maba. Unlike the majority of other Pleistocene Chinese hominid fossils, Maba exhibits a distinctively sharp edge. Maba's extracranial surface displays a crescent-shaped scar of 14 millimeters in length, an interesting feature. There is also a bump of similar size on the intracranial surface, located in the same position. Indeed, the severely battered archaic skull provides one of the earliest documented instances of human aggression, while also indicating that the ancient perpetrators may have displayed a compassionate aspect. CT scans detected a cranial fracture resulting from a blunt impact. According to the study, it is likely that the victim was struck with a weapon such as a stone, a heavy bone, or a piece of wood. The impact most certainly resulted in hemorrhaging and a concussion, leading to symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and potentially even cerebral impairment, rendering the individual vulnerable and incapacitated. Nonetheless, the scans also indicated that the wound finally underwent healing and that Maba woman survived for several years following the incident. The bone also exhibited inward depression, exerting pressure on the surrounding soft tissue. Yet this individual managed to endure for an extended duration, and the wound was not the direct cause of their demise. The team reports that despite the possibility of accidental injuries, contemporary forensic technology and other data strongly suggest the involvement of foul play. Notwithstanding the injury, the archaeological findings indicate that the Maba woman survived until her forties, which is considered a relatively advanced age for an ancient human. The research team asserts that her recuperation corroborates findings from other paleontological investigations, indicating that Neanderthals and other prehistoric humans, despite their frequent displays of aggression, also exhibited a sense of compassion for their ailing and defenseless counterparts. The recovery of the Maba woman would have required a significant amount of time, potentially spanning several days or even weeks. This injury bears a striking resemblance to the injuries commonly seen today when someone is forcefully struck by a large, blunt object. Thus, it could perhaps be the earliest known instance of interpersonal violence and trauma caused by humans that has been documented. Another potential scenario is that the Maba woman could have encountered a dangerous animal. The researchers are uncertain if a deer antler, although of suitable dimensions, would possess sufficient force to fracture the skull the cause becomes highly speculative. Did they engage in a dispute with another individual, and did they subsequently wield an object and strike them on the head? Considering the dimensions of the depression, and the amount of strength required to produce such an injury, it is also conceivable that it was inflicted using a weapon made by a different species of hominid. For example, an ancient human in Tuscany, Italy, was using fire to make wooden tools out of hardwood 170,000 years ago. This site is located on the west coast of central Italy, approximately 200 kilometers north of the Sacco Pastore site. The archaeologists are confident that whoever made them were making digging tools. They are not spears, though the implements could be used to club small animals, among other things. All of the sticks discovered were made of tough boxwood and had broken over time. Even so, the archaeologists could tell they were more than a metre long. The handle end of the digging sticks was rounded, and the other end was pointed but not sharpened. Although no hominin bones were discovered at the Tuscany site, archaeologists investigating the extraordinary organic remains discovered during construction work at a site called Poggetti Vecchi, believed the mysterious manufacture of the wooden foraging technology was an early Neanderthal. There is no direct evidence of who the manufacturers were, but the only known hominins in Europe at the time were Neanderthals. 
We know that Neanderthals from Italy climbed an active volcano and dove for clamshells. So these were very industrious and curious human beings. Back in China, which is around the same size as the whole of Europe, there are many different human fossils, but there is not a universal classification for these fossils. While fossils from Europe that date to between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago are classified as Neanderthals, even though they have a high degree of variability, Chinese fossils are not categorized as a single species. This may change with the discovery of the Denisovans, but there are complexities. The term Denisovan was introduced by geneticists in 2010 upon the discovery that the Denisova 3 genome belonged to a distinct group that had significantly diverged from the Neanderthal genomes known at that point in time. The study intentionally drew a comparison between the term Neanderthal and Denisovan, because the term Neanderthal was given to the first fossil discovered that was identified as belonging to a distinct group from modern humans. Based on genetic research, it is understood that the Denisovans diverged from the Neanderthal branch approximately 400,000 years ago. Therefore, it is reasonable to anticipate the presence of certain Neanderthal characteristics in their physical structure, which is further supported by indications of interbreeding with Neanderthals at a later stage. We must rely on the possibility of extracting ancient DNA from these fossils to determine whether they belong to the Denisovans or a separate lineage. The utilization of DNA data from Middle Pleistocene sites in Central Asia and Europe has significantly altered our understanding in several significant aspects. The previously unknown diversity shown at Denisova Cave is particularly significant. Nonetheless, there is limited knowledge on the anatomical diversity of the Denisovans, and researchers have not yet been able to obtain direct DNA evidence from Middle Pleistocene fossils found in China. As a result, certain scholars and the media are questioning which fossils will ultimately be confirmed as authentic Denisovans. Names hold significant importance in the fields of evolutionary biology and anthropology. However, numerous experts do not agree with the notion that the fossil record of China should be interpreted using a Siberian Denisovan perspective. Species names must adhere to specific rules, such as the principle of precedence. When two sets of fossils with distinct designations are proven to be part of the same species, the name assigned to the earlier set should be employed. Therefore, the term Denisovan does not function as a species designation, and researchers instead use the term Dragon Man to refer to these Chinese Denisovan fossils. And with that statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.